We created a scary shark. Nancy has stumbled into the feeding ground of a great white shark, who is enormous and dangerous. I'm not just thinking of the shark as this attacker. I'm thinking of it as this incredible creature that's doing the same thing I'm doing. I'm just trying to survive. I tried to create, design, give life to a shark that was based on reality, trying to figure out what traits, what things would identify certain type of sharks that could be in this movie. I came to the conclusion that the shark had to be a female. Females are slightly bigger, visually more scary, and they're obviously can be more protective. Designing that shark was a good way to start. We started off with a piece of concept art. Chum had a concept artist story. So we translated that with our sculptors into this. So this is our hero shark. This is a one to five model of our hero shark, which is a 22 foot long great white. Now it has a nice side. Then we have the mean side. So this is a pretty mean side of our shark. This particular shark has a history. The shark has a huge hook that's embedded in its mouth, and you can see the scar from where the hook has been there for a long time. Someone got you. So you realize that this shark is not just hunter, but hunted as well. We made her like this so the Jama could see her before visual effects took over and designed the shark. He wanted to see it with all its markings and glory and just how mean we could make it so that they would have a specific idea of what the shark was that he wanted to see in the film. So we've designed the shark, now we need to bring that shark to life. The hardest thing about water and CGI is the interaction of the CGI with the water. We really worked out a way to try to create physical elements that are able to create the movement of the water, which will then replace with CGI. We came up with sort of interesting devices like putting the fin on a CBOP to break the surface of the water. We have been using a shark fin that travels through the water to replicate our shark. It's attached to what's called a CBOP, and a CBOP is an underwater scooter. It's battery powered and it's fantastic for what we want. Many people were like, wow, this is great. Is this actually the fin? It's like, no, it's not the fin, but it, that disturbance in the water surface or those splashes are going to be very useful in post-production. Well, the challenge for Blake as the actress is having to respond and react to something that isn't there. It makes it difficult, but also I'd rather use my imagination than have a big puppet <laughs> to act opposite that's very mechanical. I do appreciate having a co-star. It makes my job so much easier. But when it's CGI, you're playing off of yourself. It's really the marriage of visual effects and special effects that make the CGI look so great in this film. We're trying to take natural motions of the shark and adapt them to the story. Jama was always referencing real shark moments, and we were using those in our own way to tell the shark's story or make it more aggressive or use its weight as one of its strengths, literally. But it always went back to what real sharks did. We wound up with a feeling that this is a big diesel-powered shark. It, lots of torque, lots of weight going into it. And when it's on its circling motion, it's just cruising. It knows it's in control of its environment. There's practical reference of sharks and waves, and so it's one of the first shots Jama really attached himself to. He really wanted to put Blake in there with the shark, and that's kind of like their first meeting. <laughs> Very definitely had a way he wanted to reveal it, where you see it barely, and then it comes through. We first previewed yeah. the film, and people started pointing to the screen when they saw the shark appear. That's that kind of visceral reaction you want in a film like this. It's really the first time you see the full glory of the shark. 
There's a lot of information in that scene. So when the shark jumps out of the water after her, it just begins to tell us so much about the shark. It's actually pretty important on a number of fronts. In the end shot, everything behind Blake has been extended or replaced. We're taking over and putting in the digital shark with probably the most detail of any of the shark shots. The way the lips pull back as the mouth bites, these are all, again, signature shark moments that Jamo was really into showing. Story-wise, Nancy is really feeling she's run out of choices and she's not going to yeah. take this anymore. So she begins to strike back. Three, two, one, go. We obviously wanted to shoot as much as we could practically. So we went through every idea you can imagine. Ultimately, it was a big CG takeover. It's a heavily choreographed scene, and just getting all the pieces to fit together really required a lot of work in post. Yeah, you've got the water simulation, the fire simulation that we could then direct and put where we wanted and have the shark get the interaction and then build up layer by layer. A lot of focus on the details in that one. Pretty much everything you're seeing has been touched by us in one way or another. It helped Jama tell a story that he couldn't do on the open ocean. And I think we gave some personality to the shark, so we have a good two-character story going. From the visual effects, we just want audiences to enjoy the ride. I just want to let you know I made it here. Mom was right. It took forever to find, but it's perfect. What did you say the name of this place was? This is paradise. Forty yards. It takes him thirty-two seconds. <laughs> 